Welcome back. We're continuing our series looking at side sword and dagger today. Um, we've done a lot of work so far on how to do defending with the dagger and simultaneously attacking with the sword, uh, which is all very well. But the minute you give somebody a second sharp object, there is a certain class of people that are always obsessed with using it as the primary weapon. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. You can attack with the dagger as well. It is sharp. It does have a point. However, what I would say is that it is not a replacement for the primary weapon. So most of the time, we're still going to be delivering our attacks with the swords. Why? Because the sword's better. Yeah, it's longer. I've got more reach as a result. Um, I can put more power behind it. There's a lot of advantages to the sword as an attacking implement over the dagger. So the way I always view this is that what the dagger gives me is a second forte, a second parrying half of a sword not a second foible. So it doesn't really give me a second attack, what it does is give me a second chance to parry. Um, and that allows me to free up the better weapon to attack. However, we will take a look at what you can do if you are absolutely invested in injuring somebody with the dagger. So let's have a look at some of the options that you've got. There's some really easy ones early on that we can look at. So if we're looking at something like Kodalanga um, and Scuola Brato coming in, if I take that with the sword rather than the dagger, previously we've looked at we take, sorry, take it with the dagger and cut or thrust into my opponent. But if I take it with the sword, the dagger is here, there is nothing to stop me delivering a redopio up into the underside of my opponent's arm. So I can deliver that as quite a nasty cut to the inside of the arm. So that's one option, although in fairness, if that same thing was coming in. This is a much more effective way of delivering that same cut. Where it does come into things that it can be a bit more useful for, if we switch across to um, Gordon Ferrer, this time if an attack is coming in and I was to take my usual parry across um, with the dagger, and maybe I thrust and I'm out of range because I didn't realize just how long Michael's arms are and I missed it. So from here, what are my options? Well, Michael at this point needs to reset or come offline on a different way to actually attack me. And the minute he does, I have that option to step forward because it's already primed with the way we parry to deliver a cut across the stomach. Yeah? So again, attack comes in, I take my normal parry, whatever needs to have missed, just an off day and I have to give him a haircut. As he comes back, I can then look to pass forward and deliver that cut and looking for the sword then to come and cover against whatever attack might be coming in. So that's another option that I've got. Probably the best option though is again Porta Ferro, which is why you're going to find this uh, Porta Ferro tends to be the standard guard that we use with Sword and Dagger because it's, it's very useful. Um, if an attack's coming in, I'm going to carry this with a pass forward in the first instance. Now obviously there's nothing to stop me making this a guard at the entry and trying to get the thrust in, which means if he does have an offhand weapon or something, he's very much trying to deal with this point, which is great because I want him focused on this so that he doesn't notice the dagger that's going into his side. So the attack comes in, I'm gonna go to guard at the entry and make him panic, and whilst he's dealing with that, shuffle forward and drive the dagger into the flank. So that's probably, if I'm fair, 90% of the time where the dagger is going to score a hit is going to be on that flank of the sword arm. However, there is another option, uh, particularly if you have an opponent that's prone to double parries. Um, not that I've given Michael a weapon today, so it was fun. <laughs> but if I come in with a fendente, so Michael's going to with, uh, parry with guard Tester, what I have done here is the sword is raised up. This gives me a large opening through the middle. So if instead of taking it as I would normally do with a grand paso, in here, I can deliver it on a pass because I'm not expecting that to land because I expect him to be good enough to parry a straightforward attack. But that does mean that as I do this, I become in range to bring the dagger in on the lower level and score that hit to the stomach whilst he is parrying because he can't parry both. And even if he does have a dagger, he's more likely to go for a cross block to make sure that's covered because he can do all kinds of funky things from that position, but it still leaves him open to that thrust on the low line. 
So really, those are the best ways of using the dagger. You can take the cut to the arm, but really the best ways are either to get the flank, whilst you're in guard of the, the entry, um, or to get a low-lying thrust of hunter up, coming up as you have delivered um, a fendente to draw their guard up. Um, and sometimes, of course, from that parry position, I can sometimes get a nice swipe across the stomach. And really, that's all there is to attacking with the dagger. There's not much more to go into because, as I said, it shouldn't be your aim. It is an if it crops up occasionally, it's useful tactic. Most of the time, this should be parrying, and you should be killing people with the sword. And on that happy and cheery note, we shall catch you next week for the next installment. Take care.